Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the April 3rd meeting of the San Dimas Rotary Club. Hard to believe it's already April. Uh, my name is Steve Scott. I'm the president of the Rotary Club. I have been a Rotarian for about 14 years now. Uh, I've been president a few times. I've been treasurer. I've been secretary. Loved every second of it. I am also a State Farm agent in the city of San Dimas. Uh, let's go around the room and let everybody introduce themselves. Raymond, how are you today, sir? Excellent. Raymond Foster, uh, Secretary of the Club, immediate past president, and glad to be here this morning. Also, you're a Zoom master. So if I look like I'm being inattentive, I am not. I'm actually being very attentive. We appreciate all your work, Raymond. Glenn, how are you today? Doing well. Glenn Johnson, member of the Satellite Rotary Club. Very good. Glad to have you here, Glenn. And uh, we pulled this next gentleman off the side of a milk carton. Derek, how are you? I'm doing well. I've been found. So all things are good. My name is Derek. I'm a teacher um, involved in the community, and it's great to be here. And we're glad you're here. Hi, Sylvia. How's everything today at the Chamber? It's going great. Thank you so much. Hi, again. Uh, my name is Sylvia Melendez. I'm the CEO of the San Dimas Chamber of Commerce. Glad you're here, Sylvia. And Marianne, how are you? besides being on mute. All right, we'll go back to Marianne later. Saw Casey Cox pop in. Casey, how's everything today, sir? Everything is going wonderful. Uh, I was going to tell Derek, he, he looks better than he looked last time I saw him on that milk carton, so I'm glad he's back. Uh, <laughs> as a life co health coach and uh, overall business coach, life is good, and I'm excited to increase my productivity today. Welcome, Jarvis. We're going to have a great day. Let's yep, do looking it. Looking forward to it. And uh, Ed Hayes, how are you, Ed? Ed's on mute. Mary Ann's off. Mary Ann, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, Steve. I'm Mary Ann Kistler, and I've been in Rotary over 30 years, and I'm the current foundation chair. And we are very happy that you're here, Mary Ann. Thank you so thank much. You. Uh, okay, let's get on to our the reason that we're always here for our, our fantastic speakers. I've been looking forward to this one for a very long time as somebody who uh, probably has more anxiety attacks about finding efficiency than than I should, than is healthy for me. Uh, looking forward to hearing what Jarvis has to say. Uh, Jarvis Leverson is a former computer engineer who transitioned into an award-winning businessman. Feeling stagnant after 15 years in the corporate world, he became determined to uncover the secrets of success after ob observing less capable individuals achieving better results. Through meticulous sp study of morning routines of icons like Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, Kobe Bryant, and Jeff Bezos, he delivered the warm gas frank framework, encapsulating their habits into an easy-to-follow routine. Ladies and gentlemen, Jarvis Leverson. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going Welcome. to... I'm going to uh, share my screen here. Let me see. Let's see if we can get Zoom to co cooperate with us today. Uh, let's basic. There we go. And let me know. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Oh, perfect. Uh, you know, one out of every six times. Yeah, I can get Zoom to operate the way I want it to on first try. So, uh, I think it's going to be a good day. We're off to a we're off to a rocking start already. Um, thank you, Steve, for the the great introduction. I'm 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 ready to listen to whoever this guest speaker guy is myself. I got my notepad here with me. Um, and by the way, your voice sounds great. I don't know what kind of microphone you use. Does anybody else notice that he sounds like a a, a radio DJ? I I need to get Steve. You got to get us in on this. I got a face for radio. That's why I don't have a screen up. Yeah. <laughs> well, your, your your voice your voice uh, compensates for it. So, uh, so so thanks for the for the opportunity here. Um, my name is Jarvis. I'm a peak performance coach. Uh, they call me the Morning Hero. I'll tell you a little bit about how that name came about. But uh, and there, it came because I uh, some you know maybe seven years ago i really got into waking up early and maximizing my day and i started posting about it online and uh i started posting these videos on instagram you know at the time that i woke up and what i was doing when i woke up and then one day someone was like man dude it's like you're a hero every morning and i was like gosh that actually has a good ring to it morning the morning hero yeah i'll take that and so, um, and so now that I'm the morning hero, I fully adopted the name and 
Uh, so every morning I post little inspirational uh, videos and quotes. And, you know, if you're into if you're into that kind of stuff, uh, I'm the guy up at 4 a.m., uh, you know, showing people my workouts, um, giving people wisdom and encouragement and motivation for the day. So if that's your kind of stuff, uh, you can scan that QR code and it'll take you to my Instagram page where you can uh, where you can follow. And, you know, uh, I'll be that annoying, that annoying dude showing up in your feed all the time. So, and by the way, any other, any, any early risers out there? Am I the only crazy one? No, sir. Right there with you. Casey's in it. Uh, all right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got a band together. So uh, normally I talk about morning routines, uh, but today I'm going to talk something about something a little different called the five-star life. And this is, a, I'm actually in the process of writing a book right now. And uh, this is going to be the uh, kind of one of the cornerstones of my, my book, but I, well, just a little background about me. So I've been a peak performance coach for five years. I do corporate keynotes, trainings, uh, workshops, all to help people be more productive and produce more out of life. I think we're all called to do something great where, you know, we weren't born just to to sit there and kind of wither away and just to coast through life. I think we all have a greater purpose and greater calling on our life and not many people are very intentional about pursuing it and maximizing all the gifts and talents and capabilities they have. And so my passion is to help other people tap into their gifts, talents, and capabilities so they can produce everything that they were called to produce here in life. So that's what I do um, for a living. And it's all rooted kind of in this, kind of this, this the, the, the findings from this book. Has anyone ever seen this book before? No. The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. So this book was written by a woman named Bronnie Ware, and she was a hospice worker. And as she would take care of her patients as they were on their deathbed, she would always ask them the question, what were, the, what were your greatest regrets in life? And then over the years, she accumulated, you know, hundreds or if not thousands of responses to this question. And then she wrote a book about summarizing her, uh, her findings or the answers of what people said when she asked them, what were their greatest regrets in their life? Um, what do you think they are? Let's give some answers. What What do you think people regretted at the end of their life? What do you think are some of the things that they regret? What are the top regrets? Probably not, not spending time with family. Not spending time with family. Who is that? Uh, Marilyn. Yeah, not spending time with family. Anyone? Who else? Anyone? I would say other people think. Wait, say that again. Worrying about what other people think. Oh yeah, good one. Worrying about what other people think. What else? What else do you think? What do you think people regret it the most? Not, not taking care of themselves. Uh, let's go, Ed. Uh, not taking care of themselves. Not taking care of themselves, yep. And I believe, was that Marianne also? No, that was me. Uh, not spending all their hard-earned money. <laughs> Ooh, not, not spending all their hard-earned money. They save too much. That's a good one. <laughs> I think yeah. uh, not playing it safe, not betting on yourself, not having faith in your ability to succeed and kind of taking the easier road on things. Taking the easy road, right? Yeah. Yeah. Playing it too safe. I love it. Casey, what do you think? I, I think it was number six, but not joining the rotary. Number, <laughs> that part didn't make it to the book, <laughs> which uh, I think kind of goes into not uh, not playing it too safe and not not following your dreams. Um <clears throat> All of those, all those answers really were all part of the top five. But if I had to kind of combine all the top five into, into one core regret is this. It was that I wish I had to chase my dreams and spend more time doing the things that I love with the people that I love. That's kind of a summary of all five. I wish I hadn't worried about what other people were thinking and chased my own dreams. Wish I hadn't worked so hard and spent more time doing doing the things that I wanted to do. And I wish I had to spend more time with people that I wanted to do it with. I think a lot of people at the right now, they spend a lot of their time doing things that they don't like doing. Uh, they're not taking care of themselves. Um, they're not going after the thing that they were called to do. And at the end of their life, this is what ends up happening. And so I came, I became obsessed or how do I make it to the end of my life and not ever have this being a regret? This is what life is about for me. I'm gonna introduce you to 
my heart and soul. This is why I do what I do. Uh, so uh, I'll kind of do a quick round of introductions. Anybody rem remember my name? What's my name? Jarvis. Oh, okay. You guys got the first answer right. This is going to be a lot of trivia going. I hope you, you know, have your hands close to your unmute button because I'm going to be asking a lot of questions. Uh, so my name is Jarvis. My wife, her name is Jane. Uh, we're coming up on our seven year anniversary. Gosh, it's, I feel old saying that. Uh, coming up on our seven year anniversary. Um, we have a four year old son. His name is Jetson. And then uh, our two year old daughter. This this picture was taken shortly after she was born, but she's two years old now. Her name is Jordan. So all together, we are Jarvis, Jane, Jetson, Jordan. We are the dun dun dun, dun the J team. We come in swooping in, saving the day. Um, funny story about my my son. He so you can see my wife has brown hair and brown eyes. I have no hair and brown eyes. I, I used to have brown hair. Now it's no hair and brown eyes. Our, our son came out blonde hair and blue eyes. We have no idea where this dude came from. He's just a, a, a freak of nature. Uh, I keep telling my wife, uh, the 23 and me is on the way, but um, don't, don't tell her I said that if you ever see her. But uh, but yeah, so this is this is why I'm obsessed over productivity, living up to your full potential is so that you can do more of the things you love with the people you love and never have to regret a day doing it. And so today I want to share and th this for me almost didn't happen. Um, I'll take you back when we first met. So this is us. We're doing. Uh, uh, we had just. Uh, we had just started dating, and uh, life is good. You know, at the time I was a tech, I was a software sales rep. I uh, just moved to San Diego when we met. Uh, she was doing pretty well herself, and so we moved in. We had a penthouse suite overlooking San Diego, overlooking downtown uh, San Diego, over in Little Italy, and life was good. And then, um, all of a sudden, I, I just started to feel this unhappiness, like. Like, I don't know if you've ever felt this way, but it just felt like I was just kind of in a rut. Like every day was the same. It was just in the cycle of life, just just not really excited about what I was doing. Um, my white life wasn't painful, but it wasn't truly invigorating either. I was just kind of like coasting, just like there, just like going through the motions. You know, it felt like they were just been going through the motions. I was just going through the motions and... I, um, uh, for me, I started seeking, trying to fill that void of emptiness. And for me, I started filling it with unhealthy things like coming home and having a drink every night, going out and staying out late and hanging with friends, um, uh, eat, eating and drinking, uh, overindulging and, uh, unhealthy food. And, and you can see here, I'm probably 30 pounds overweight and, I just kind of got into this rhythm of always trying to seek these, this negative, I had this, this negative reward system. Like at the end of the day, I, I needed to reward myself. Like I was so empty from the day that finally it's time for me to do something for me. And I would fill it with negative self-sabotaging habits until it started to spiral out of control. Uh, having a drink every now, every now and then, or every other night turned into me having five or six drinks every single night. Uh, turned into me not showing up to work the next day. Turned into me not being the best partner for my for my for my girlfriend at the time. And I went from within one year, I went from being the number one sales rep to getting fired, and getting you know me and my girlfriend decided that we weren't the best fit anymore. To almost being homeless, roaming around the streets of San Diego trying to find a place to sleep. And um, that for me uh, was a kind of a breaking point where finally I had to move back home to Chicago where I'm from and move in with my mother. And so there I was at 35 years old, trying to figure out my life all over again, trying to put the pieces back. I knew I was better than that, but uh, so there I was on my mom's couch. And I remember I was talking on the phone one day with one of my friends and uh, this, I'm gonna introduce you to Aaron. And so Aaron, He's uh, this South African guy. You can't tell by this picture, but he has a thick South African accent. 
and me and him were, we would talk all the time and a uh, great guy. And uh, Aaron had called me one day and he's like, Jarvis, he's like, Jarvis, I, I'm so excited. I, I can't do this act, the accent the way he does it, but he's like, I just had 364 days of learning Spanish. And I was like, okay, so what's so, you know, gay? First of all, congratulations, great. But uh, he, I was like, well, you know, why, you know, why are you, why are you so giddy about this? And he's like, Jarvis, you don't understand. You see, uh, Aaron has a beautiful wife and she's Mexican. Her entire family is, lives, currently lives in Mexico. Uh, she's first generation in the United States. And together they had this beautiful son. Now they have two kids. And her grandma, her mom is the one that was their full-time caretaker, lived with them in the house, full-time caretaker of the kids. And he said, you know, Jarvis, for the entire time we've been together, I've never been able to talk to my mother-in-law because I can't speak the language. And, you know, it's been a pain point and it's been something that I've always wanted to do. And she also speaks to our children in Spanish. And so everyone in my house speaks Spanish, but me, and I can't communicate with them. And he says, so for me, I just, been, I just hit 365 days in a row of learning Spanish. And he says, now I'm finally conversational. He said, yesterday, for the first time, I had a full conversation with my mother-in-law. He's like, this is monumental for me. I was like, that's powerful, man. I was like, what was it? How did you do it? What was the thing that helped you establish this streak <laughs> so in order to, to be able to learn this thing that you've always struggled to struggle with? He said, well, you know, it's because of this app I have on my phone. It's called Duolingo. And this app it turns it into a game. And so every day you get on this app, you take lessons and you're getting up, you're getting points, you're awarded points as you're getting answers right. And then you get a streak. And then after a while you get a hot streak going. And then now he's like, it got to a point where it became less about learning Spanish. I went in every day because I wanted to win the game. He's like, I'm, I'm here now because every day I just wanted to win the game. And in winning the game, I was also learning Spanish. I'm like that is that's a great concept. And so I got off the phone with Aaron that day, and I was like, "This concept of gamification." It's like, I wondered, can your life, can I turn my life into a game where every day I'm, I'm just trying to beat the game. And so I started really digging into this concept of what does a winning, you know, if you were to do this, how would you, how could you do it? And so in order to have a game, you have to have a scoring system. You have to have a clear way of knowing if you won or lost. And that's based on your a score. And so I started getting deep into the philosophy of what does ultimate success and happiness mean for people? And ultimately, it comes down to these three core areas of life. They call it health, wealth, and in relationships and wealth doesn't necessarily mean wealth in terms of money wealth in terms of your contribution and for a lot of in a lot of cases the more you contribute it's reflected back in terms of income but not necessarily but health wealth slash contribution and relationships these are the three core areas that bring us as humans happiness joy and fulfillment the more we maximize these areas the more happiness we feel. And so it's at this intersection is where your true full potential in life is. And so as I started kind of getting really deep into this philosophy, I was like, okay, so what if I just broke these core areas down and kind of created a little scoring system based on things I did in each of these areas of life? And so here's what I came up with. I said, if I took each area and came up, what are the habits that that I needed to do in each area that gave me a success, gives me a win for that area. So for health, obviously, and to win in my health for the day, I have to raise my heart rate, which is exercise and eat right. I think there's no debate there. For you to maximize your health, it comes down to how much you move and how much you, and how much and, and what 
you eat. So eat right and exercise. It's kind of like the winning formula for winning in your health. I think there's no debate there. In your wealth slash contribution, let's call it your professional, your career, your impact, your passion project. In that area, what does it take to win? Uh, and so I came up with reading every day because the reading gives you the formula that you need to be successful in whatever it is you're doing. So reading things that help you grow. And then one big thing, breaking things down. I know we can muddy the waters and say there's 75 things I got to do today. But if you were to say, what's the one thing, the one thing that's going to have the biggest impact on this goal of mine, on me advancing my career, on me building this nonprofit, on me writing that book or whatever the big thing you're working on. What's the one thing that you can do today that'll have the biggest impact? So I'll call that the one thing. And then finally, in your relationships, spreading joy. Obviously, the more you get, the more you give, the more you get. So the more you are a source of joy, the more in return you will receive joy from others uh, and fulfillment there. And so I said, these are five things. If I did these five things every day, that would promote a winning day. And so I called it the five-star day. There are five core habits. And if I did all five, that's a five-star day. And it um, now and then it turned into a game. It's almost like your Yelp score. I, I look, I think of it like a Yelp store, a Yelp score. Like whenever you're about to go to a restaurant, what's the first thing you do? I don't know about you, but I'm a foodie. First thing I do is I go to Yelp. I check out the reviews and check out the ratings. And the very first thing thing I kind of judge a restaurant on is its rating on is its score and that the high the closest it is to a five a five getting for having five stars that means it's a really good restaurant I mean I'm not gonna go to a two and a half star restaurant I don't know about you but um, I got pretty high standards and so this kind of made it like okay my goal is to have a five star day like that's a winning day if I exercised if I ate right if I read something. If I did one big thing towards my passion project, towards my biggest goal, towards my career, towards my profession, the one biggest thing that's going to have the biggest impact. And then if I spread joy, if I did those five things, that is a winning day. And that became the source of the five star rating system for a day. How do you know if you won? How do I know if I won the day is if I did these things and every day I, I give myself a score. How did I do today? Was it a four-star day? Was it a three-star day? I've had some two-star days <laughs> where the cool thing about now having a score is that I recognize when I'm falling short or not. If it was a two-star day, I'm like, oh gosh, okay, I know. Tomorrow I need to pick it up. I got to do something different tomorrow. Uh, so now this ensures that every area of my life I'm pouring into and then I'm maximizing uh, because I'm every day I have a way of knowing if I'm winning or not. So I'll tell you, so there I was on my couch where I kind of came up with this system. And every day, my goal was to set out the day to have a five-star day. And then at, by the end of the day, score myself. And here's what happened. Within three months of me establishing this system on my mom's couch, um, I'm working out and I'm eating healthy every single day. And so I lost 15 pounds and got down into the best shape of my life. In that same three months, I got my real estate license. Every day, my one big thing was I wanted to pursue real estate. And so it was to study real estate, pass the exam, and it gets signed on to a brokerage. Within three months, I got I got my real estate license, signed on to a brokerage, and moved back to San Diego and became one of the fastest growing commercial real estate agents in downtown San Diego. In that same three-month window, that girl that I was broken up with while I was on my mom's couch, we rekindled. Every day, my spread joy task was to send her a loving text message. And within three months, we rekindled and we got engaged. And now we have probably the cutest family I've ever seen. You know, when you walk into Walmart and you go see the picture frames and they always got this little stat, those stock photos of these families. I think our family photo should be in the, in the Walmart picture frames. <laughs> <laughs> But every area of my life exploded all because every day I was very intentional about winning in each of those areas. 
and scorn myself. And it became a game. It's like it got to the point where I wasn't even trying. I, I just loved getting a five star day every day. And so that's how I came up with this term, the five living a five star life. Five star life is one where every area you're very intentional. And so that um, that now is essentially the, the premise of the book that I'm writing is how do you win every day and build a five star life for yourself? Um, I'll, I'm not sure how much time we have. I'll quickly go through my formula. Uh, I think to win the day, you have to start by winning the morning. So I'll go and give you a real quick how I my my formula of it's a three step process to do to uh, to win to win every single day. And it's based off the word win. And so uh, the first W, the first step of the process is the W, which is to wake up early. Uh, I don't know if any, I heard a, a few of you said uh, you, you wake up early, but if you cringed when I said wake up early, trust me, I get it. I was never a morning person. Um, I was a night owl, actually. Uh, I went to school for computer engineering and we, co we coded all night long. And so we called them hackathons. And so I made it through college, you know, staying up to four in the morning, writing computer code all day, I mean, all night. And so that was just who I was as a person. I never thought I was a morning person. Uh, but there is some magic to waking up early. Um, let me ask you, uh, who, who said they were early risers? I think it was, was it Casey? Uh, who else said they were early riser? I wake up like at 4.30, start my day at five at work. All right, who, and who was that? I can't say. I can't see who that was for those talking. Was that Diva? Yes. Okay. Why? And you mind me ask why? Why do you get up early? What do you do? What, I mean, what's the benefit for you? Well, I do wake up early because I try to go to the gym before I start work, just so I could be mentally prepared for my day. Um, but uh, and and I like I prefer to work out in the morning because I just like, literally I just feel like everything changes if I have to work out in like midday I feel like I'm rushing to work out so it yeah. really, like formulates my day I yeah, get start, happier if I work out in the morning start the day with yourself first right fill your cup first I love it uh, anyone else who else said they are early risers it's I this Steve I do as well I'm up at four um usually workout starts about four forty five. Yeah. Yeah. So again, start starting the day with yourself. Yeah. The the simple answer that we found is that uh, the morning we tend to have better habits. The evening we tend to have unhealthy habits. And so let's spend more time where we have those healthy habits. Uh, it's not that the evening is bad, but the munchies come up, the wasted time on TV comes up, the distractions of uh, moping or lamenting come up. And that uh, doesn't happen when you get up early. That's it. Yes. Uh, I, I tell you why, why that is. It's because of a, a something called that I call the whirlwind. The whirlwind is just everything that life throws at you on a daily basis from, as I take you a great example, yesterday I had my day all planned out. I knew exactly what I needed to do and when I was going to do it. And I get a call from my mom saying that she's stranded on the side of the road. And I go and get her and it takes my entire day. It literally throws off my entire day. That's the whirlwind. The whirlwind is just from family obligations to uh, social media, to text messages, to phone calls, to interruptions and disruptions and, and, and distractions and, you know, breaking news and everything all day long that's pulling at your attention. That's just the whirlwind of life. And that's everyone. Everyone has, Mostly dead. everyone has their own whirlwind. Now, how do you defeat the whirlwind? Most people just oh. wake up and they dive right into their whirlwind. They wake up and start responding. They wake up and start reacting. They just wake up just in time to start dealing with the whirlwind of their day or the whirlwind of their life. And what they don't realize that day after day, all they're doing is just spinning in circles. And this is what happened to me. Day after day, just spinning in circles, not going anywhere. Now, how do you defeat the whirlwind? Well, most the world normally starts to get activated somewhere around 6 a.m. Around 6 a.m., you know, Facebook starts, starts going off, going crazy. Breaking news is starting to erupt. 
Uh, the kids are waking up. The dog needs to be walked. Like somewhere around six, the world wakes up and the whirlwind gets activated. So if you want to defeat your whirlwind, you have to get up before your whirlwind. My whirlwind right now is my kids. You know, my kids are, they're, they're, they're morning heroes. My kids wake up between 5.30 and 6 in the morning. And if I wake up right into my kids, I am grumpy. I am not a good person. I'm, I'm short-tempered. I'm moody. Like if I wake up into my, my son jumping on me in bed, and from that point on, my entire day is just off. I have to be up at 4.30 in the morning, between 4 and 4.30, because I have to have breathing room. I have to have runway. I have to have buffer. I have to start with myself first. And if I don't have that buffer, I'm not a good person to them. I'm not a good person to myself. I'm not serving my highest purpose in life. And so I believe waking up early, you have to have that time to, to start with yourself before you just get up and start addressing the world. And so I think every great day, if you want to win the day, it all starts with winning the morning. So getting up early, my recommendation is at least 60 minutes before your first obligation. And so whatever the first thing is you have to normally report to, before, uh, I call that the power hour. You give yourself a power hour before you have to do the first thing that you normally do. That hour is for undistracted alone time quiet time peaceful sanctuary for you to get in tune to your uh you know to your connect to, to your source to connect to your goals to meditate to do some exercise do the things that fill your cup before you then start your day and so that's the first the first key to winning your day is by getting up a little earlier the second thing, the second piece, so a lot of people say, okay, now Jarvis, what do I do? Okay, I, I recognize I need to start waking up a little earlier because right now my day is chaos. And so if I want to beat the chaos, I got to wake up a little earlier to get the calm going. But what do I do in that hour? Uh, the, the second, that takes me to the eye. The eye of a winning day is setting your intentions. What, is the, what do you think this means? Uh, let's get a few folks. Let's see. Uh, Glenn, what do you think this means when I say set your intentions? What does that mean? And you're on mute if you're uh, attempting to say something. Yes. In, set your intentions. Plan your day. Decide what needs to be done and what doesn't need to be done. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Plan your day. Anyone else want to chime in on this? What does that mean to set your intentions? Well, I think Glenn nailed it. It's just establishing what does a winning day look like today? Plan it out. What am I going to do today? What do I need to do today? How do I need to serve? How am I going to show up today in my highest and best that, so that at the end of the day, I'll be proud? It, most people never really set an intention for the day. They just kind of get up and go. And at the end of the day, they sit around and say, okay, well, what did I do today? What happened? Today, I just kind of was, it was a tornado. And... Now I'm feeling empty. And that's how you get sucked into these negative self-sabotaging habits because you feel empty at the end of the day. You never really had a clear plan for the day. You kind of just went out there and now, now you want some fatty food. Now you want to just sit in front of Netflix. You need to do something because you just feel empty. When you start the day being very intentional about what a winning day looks like, and, at the, and then you go off and you win the day, by the end of the day, you don't feel empty. You actually, you feel accomplished. And so now you don't need to lean on those self-sabotaging habits. You don't need to lean on those bad habits that Casey was talking about. You don't need that hour of mind-numbing Netflix while downing a cheeseburger from McDonald's because you, the day gave you fulfillment. And so I believe that every morning, I sit, I firmly believe that you write. Anything you write is how you manifest things. And so I have a journal. In fact, uh, I'll show you my... This is my journal right here. I have them all over the house, but this is my own custom journal. But every morning I sit in front of a journal and I write what my intentions are for the day. Uh, it, and it really, you know, in its simplest form, I go down and I ask myself for those, uh, those five things that I shared earlier, raising my heart rate, eating right, reading. I just go down and listen and say, okay, what am I going to do today for each of these areas? How am I going to exercise today? And I'll write it out. What's my goal? And then how I'm going to write it. I'm going to achieve it. 
how am I going to eat healthy today? Okay. And I'll think through, okay, what does that look like for me today? What am I having for lunch? What am I having for dinner? Um, what am I going to read today? That's, that's going to push me forward right now. I'm writing a book. So instead of reading, I've swapped it out for writing in my case. Uh, but how am I going to write for my book today? What's the one thing I'm going to do today to, to, to push my, my morning hero program forward? And then how am I going to spread joy? Who am I going to spread joy to today? Who can I compliment? Who can I reach out to to share the word of encouragement? Who can I acknowledge? So I, in the morning, I sit there in front of my journal and I just kind of think through the day. In each area of my life, I go through and say, okay, how am I going to show up in each of these areas? And I write it down. I think that's the, the, the key to life is writing things down. Anyone else write stuff down? You know, who, who raise your hand if you have a journal. One, we only got one one journaler out there. I have one. I got. I'm just not intentional with it. <laughs> I do my best. Yeah, Casey, how do you use your journal, Casey? Uh, very simply, as it best suits me. Uh, you know, it, if it becomes a have to, I don't enjoy it. So, uh, what I often do is in the morning, I, I write some things I'm grateful for. Start the day with gratitude. Uh, and then uh, very often I put a few things that are my intentions, my big rocks. And then uh, if I have time or I think about it before the end of the day, I like to capture one or two things that uh, I celebrated from the day. So it's gratitude, big rocks or intentions. And then uh, what am I celebrating? Yeah, there it is. Yeah. And so that's for, for it's so, in the very, very simplest form, you know, having a place for you to capture your intentions what am I going to do today that's going to where that at the end of the day I can say today was a win? What are those intentions for today? And I, I again kind of following the five star life, I come up with five, at least five, five things that I say. Uh, these are things that I, I'll feel proud at the end of the day. You start doing that, then all of a sudden you start to see progress in any in every area that matters to you. All from just writing it down every morning. What are you going to accomplish for the day? Uh, and then that, that kind of takes you to the to the end. And this was the most important, and that is no days off. Um, I'll do a quick little exercise you know, of to, to 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 show you the importance of doing something consistently. Something so small, minute, minuscule, but doing it consistently, the power of that. So we'll do a thought exercise. Let's say I gave you a penny and and told you double that penny every day for 30 straight days. Double the penny every day for 30 straight days. How much do you think you'd have on the 30th day? No fancy math or multiplication, just double the penny. So first day you have you have the penny I gave you, you have one penny, then next day two pennies, then four, then eight, then 16, then 32. So every day you double it. By day 30, how much do you think you'd have? <clears throat> uh, let's see. Steve, how, what do you think? Oh, man. Uh, I was just trying to do the math in my head, and I have no idea. I'm going to say $90. $90, okay. And I know everybody's sitting in front of their computer right now, so I'm going to ask you. No cheating. Uh, what do you think by day 30? So Steve says 90. Let's get two more guesses. Wow. Uh, Ed, Ed, what do you think? I, I know it's like several hundred thousand. I can't remember if it's a million or not. Okay, let's just say it's a million. Ed says a million. Boy, Ed, that's a heavy, that's that's a big penny you got. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see one more. It was Margarita. Yes. How much do you think you'd have if you doubled the penny every day for 30 days? Wait. I, I was logged out for a brief second. Can you repeat that question or repeat the scenario around it? So you, I give you a penny and say double the penny every day for 30 days. This small little penny and you doubled it every day and you did it for 30 straight days. How much would you have on the 30th day? How much money would you have? You know, I went to uh, law school to avoid doing math. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure is on, I don't know, 60? <laughs> Okay, so we had 60, we had 90. Ed, Ed, Ed went way on Mars and said a million. Uh, 
if you double the penny, something so small, this very insignificant action, but you did it every single day, you'd have five million three hundred sixty-eight thousand seven hundred and nine dollars. Wow, it's my that surprise. Was a tad off. Would you say? I said, I guess my ninety dollars was a tad off. Just a little bit. Uh, does that surprise anybody? No. Five million dollars for doing something so small insignificant and minuscule but you did it every day but here's the thing let's take this even further what if i said okay you don't have to do it every day i mean like we're not greedy here right like you know i don't need five million dollars um what if i say you just do it every other day you can slack off a little bit you deserve it you double the penny every other day instead of every day how much would you have Glenn, what do you think? You'd have probably in the neighborhood of five thousand dollars. Whoa, five thousand! So we just all we did was cut our double our time in half, and you go from five million to five thousand. Okay, so Glenn says five thousand. Who else has wants to throw a guess out there? You doubled it every other day. I'm going to guess it's 100000 for every other day. Casey says 100000 Let's go one more guess. You doubled it every other day instead of every day. 500 500 So we had 100000 100, 5000 and 500 Who said 500 by the way? So the... If you doubled it, if I, if I said it's okay for you to slack off just a little bit, you'd only have $327. Oh. $5 million versus $327. The only difference is one of them, you just did it every now and then. And I think this is the sauce of life, right? I mean, this is, this is kind of the, the crux of life here. Most people think, oh, you know, I, I do it. I do it. Okay, I do it every now and then. You know, I, I go to the gym every now and then. I eat healthy every now and then. You know, that's good. I wake up early uh, every now and then, right? That's I, I tell a partner I love them or I care about them every now and then. And then they're frustrated when they get every now and then results. You see, extraordinary things don't come from what you do every now and then. They come from the things you do every single day. If you were to chart out the growth of that penny over time, this is what it looks like. So I, I put this into Excel and had to create a chart. And so that penny growth looks like this. And you'll notice something. That penny stayed flat a long period of time. I mean, it's doubling, it's doubling, but it's so minuscule, you can't even tell it's working. It's working, but you just can't see it. There's no visible growth at all up until about day 27 or so. And then it hit something what we call the tipping point. And the tipping point is when all of a sudden, is this windfall of results. It's this windfall of growth. Everything that you wanted to happen all of a sudden starts happening. The problem here is this is how life is. Most people think life is linear, that I do a little bit and I get a little results. As soon as I do something, I immediately see the action. I, I lifted a couple of weights. I see some muscle. I ate a salad. All of a sudden, I have a six pack. Uh, I made a couple of calls and now I got a couple of new clients. Like they think that every time you take an action, you will immediately see the result. But that's not how life works. According to this, you'll go a long period of time doing something without seeing any results until all of a sudden something happens. Now all of a sudden a phone call comes out of nowhere. Now all of a sudden a new deal shows up. Now all of a sudden a new client comes out of, out of the woodworks. Now all of a sudden your six pack is showing and you don't know where it came from. Like now all of a sudden 
it seems like all this favor is happening. It's because you hit the tipping point. You see, that's why I think for anything you want to pursue in life is not, you have to have a way of, of staying consistent till you hit your tipping point. Um, I'll tell you my quick story about my son, uh, Jet. So Jet is, uh, along with being the world's, absolute world's cutest baby. Um, he better today. He, Yesterday yeah. I was off. Wait, hold Up on. Here. I think we got, we're getting some, uh, there we go. Uh, along with uh, also being the world's cutest human being, he, um, last year we found out that he has autism. And I mean, he has an amazing, amazing mind. Like he's was super high functioning, but he's his autism shows up in the form of he obsesses over something that he wants. I mean, he will not let it go. And so one day I'm sitting on the couch watching TV and, you know, he also loves <laughs> he loves applesauce. And so I'm sitting there and, the, and he's like, Dad, I want some applesauce. Can you give me some applesauce? And I was like, OK, Jet, uh. I'm watching I'm watching something on TV right now. As soon as it gets to commercial, I'll uh, I'll get up and get you your applesauce. He's like, Dad, applesauce. I want some applesauce. I'm like, okay, okay, I heard you, but let me let me I gotta I gotta finish what I'm watching. As soon as I finish, I will get up and go to the kitchen and get you your applesauce. Dad, applesauce, 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 and just went nuts. And I said, Okay, 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 okay. I will stop what I'm doing to get up and go get you this applesauce. And he got his applesauce. But he didn't get it on the first time he asked me. He didn't get it on the second time he asked. Or the third time, or the fourth time, or the fifth time, or the sixth time, or the seventh time, or the eighth time. He had to ask me over and over and over and over and over and over again until finally... I got up and I gave him the applesauce. You see, I think the universe looks at us that way. Like, I gave him the applesauce because finally I saw how bad he wanted it. And for us, the universe is sitting back and we might say, yeah, yeah, I want more love in my relationship. Yeah, yeah, I want to make more money. Yeah, I want to birth this passion project. Yeah, I want to get in better health. And the universe is sitting there saying, okay, I heard you. And the next day, yes, I want to, I want more love in my relationship. I want to make more money. I want to birth this passion project. I want to get in better health. And the universe is saying, okay, okay, I heard you. But you're not going to get what you want just from doing things every now and then. You have to ask for it over and over and over and over until finally, all of a sudden, the universe says, I see how bad you want it. There you go. Every day you've been waking up early. Every day you've been writing down your intentions of what you want. Every day you've been proving how bad you want it. The winning formula isn't just from every now and then. You think, oh, okay, I want this. Every now and then you're showing up for yourself. Every now and then you're getting up early. It's an every single day formula. You have to win every day. Wake up early, set your intentions, no days off. And when you do that, you will have a five-star life. With that being said, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, let me know if in, uh, in the comments if you have uh, any questions or I'll open it up. Any, anyone have any, any questions uh, before I give you a couple of free gifts? I just want to say thank you. This was a great, like, just great presentation. Yeah, what'd you get from it? What was the takeaway? Just um, not only setting your intention, but just reminding yourself that, like, you can't get instant gratification. You just got to, it, it's just kind of like going back to the basics. Like, just remember that it takes time. And the more you do it, the better you get at it, the better you get at it, you know, the the higher the possibility of things working out to your favor, you know, kind of like having your own business. It, it takes time to 
network and meet people and and eventually people get to know you and then they want to do business with you and then unexpectedly they people just start calling you so it was really good thank you yeah yeah thank you that's uh that's it that's it that's uh every every day every day just understanding that it's it, the promise is there waiting for you but you have to show up every day and uh starting with winning winning your morning that's where it starts yeah did uh um and uh, is that steve i had um i wanted to kind of describe what was up on the screen you mind if i put it back up there oh go for it that's fine uh it, it says that oh i think uh yeah disabled it there it is and so uh, there are a couple of things that I do want to offer. So every morning I mentioned that I have a process of where you set your intentions. Uh, I have a, something called the Hero Journal. It's a journal I use every morning where it kind of walks you through those five areas of life of and asks you, like, hey, how are you going to maximize these areas today? How are you going to exercise? How are you going to eat healthy? How are you going to show up in your relationships? And so if you want uh, this, Q, this QR code is up there. It's it sells it's on Amazon for seventy dollars, but um, through this QR code, it's a twenty dollar off coupon. Uh, so I just offer it as kind of like a free or as a as a thank you for you, if you want to get an intention set in journal called the Hero Journal. Uh, that QR code, uh, you can get a twenty twenty dollars off just as a, a thank you for allowing me to come today. Also, anyone that does that. We talked about the tipping point. You got to do something for 30 straight days before you really start to see some results from it. And so I have a 30 day, I call it the 30 days to greatness challenge. You can also have that uh, as a free gift entry into that challenge as well. Every day I send you a quick little video of a habit or something that you can implement that will dr drastically uh, change or improve the trajectory of your business and life. And we do it for 30 straight days just to help keep get you over the hump until you uh, you kind of lock these habits in as as uh, your autopilot. And so, again, both of these, if you scan that QR code, you'll you can get the journal and then you'll also get entered into that 30 days to greatest challenge uh, at no cost to you. So the this is just a, a thank you for allowing me to come speak there. Jarvis, thank you. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for kind of being a motivating force. Um, the, you know, the repetitive nature of this is an easy trap to fall out of, at least for me. There are days when, you know, that alarm goes off at four and sports center seems more interesting than lifting or whatever it is. And so reminding, getting that reminder from you that this is an everyday thing that you have to, you know, continue to get through it uh, was was an excellent reminder for me. Um, I wish you nothing but success with the book and everything else you are doing. I'm not going to wish you luck because I think you're one of those people who make your luck. Uh, so thank you for the time. I will be following you on IG. Uh, I hope everybody else does as well. And, uh, we will be keeping an eye out for you, man. I look forward to, uh, interacting with you in the future. Thank you guys. Thank you, Steve. All right. And so, uh, I'm going to let you guys get to your meeting. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks very much, Jarvis. Thanks. Okay, folks, um, that went, as as we know, a little bit longer than normal, but I think it was well worth it. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and skip Fine Master Raymond, if you're okay with that, and just move directly on to Action 360. Is there anything that we need to discuss? No, I'm not, I'm not right now. we got a board meeting next week. I have stuff to talk about then. Okay, perfect. And um, would you like to throw up the calendar? Uh, I am doing so. Okay, so um, we have more like today coming up. Rotary means business on the 17th. Um, and then um, I got Alex Tremble with Connect Lead, Building Lasting Connections. And we are beginning to book um, next Rotary year. And we actually have two more coaching people coming in. Uh, so we got quite a bit of that coming in. And I think everybody's enjoying this. So that's a good deal. Fantastic. Okay, folks. Well, um, Raymond, thank you for another great speaker. Thank you for all the work you do. Everybody else, thank you so much for showing up. We appreciate that very much. As a reminder, if you are not on the board and you want to attend the board meeting, if there's a, a topic you are you would like to discuss, please let us know. We can put it into new business and we can have a conversation about it. Other than that, everybody have a good rest of the day and we will see you all later.